monocrystalline silicon in photovoltaics. Narrated by Gerardo Alvarez. Kathleen Fitzgerald. And Tyler Saunders. This presentation will discuss a handful of major topics, beginning with an introduction to photovoltaics, or how solar cells actually work. Next, we will go over the importance of photovoltaic cells and how they provide society with a clean alternative to fossil fuels. Afterwards, we will dive deeper into the production process of solar cells by introducing key materials used, such as monocrystalline silicon. It is necessary then to explain the crystal structure and unique properties of monocrystalline silicon and why it is ideal to use in producing energy. Next, we'll discuss the Cherovsky process, which is how this material is created. In conclusion, this video will introduce some benefits and drawbacks that are associated with using monocrystalline silicon in solar cells, as opposed to using other possible materials. Let's begin by explaining how photovoltaics work. The photoelectric effect was first noted by French physicist Edmund Becquerel in 1839, but it was Albert Einstein in 1905 whose paper on the nature of light forms the basis of photovoltaic cells today. In modern photovoltaic cells, the electrons in the n-type semiconductor migrate through the p-n junction into the p-type semiconductor, neutralizing positive holes and leaving behind static positive charges in the n-side of the junction. The holes in the p-type semiconductor do the same thing, except they migrate to the N side and leave behind static negative charges in the P side of the junction. The area around the junction is then referred to as a depletion zone, due to the lack of charge carriers, while the separation of charges creates an electric field. When light is, when light is absorbed by the semiconductor, it creates a free electron and a corresponding hole. The electric field then causes them to flow in opposite directions, with the electron going in the N direction. The resulting flow of electrons in positively charged holes creates a voltage. In 2014, the United States generated about 4,093 billion kilowatt hours of electricity. About 67% of the electricity generated was from fossil fuels. Solar energy has emerged as a potential alternative to fossil fuels with rapid developments in the 21st century. Although there are limitations such as a need for solar exposure, as well as the inability to store the electricity produced, Solar cells currently provide clean energy with ever-increasing efficiency. They reduce our dependence on for foreign oil while creating new jobs that currently employ 143,000 Americans. A few key materials have emerged as the front runners in photovoltaic cell production. Monocrystalline silicon was one of the first materials used in photovoltaic cells and remains the most common. It has a typical efficiency of 15 to 20 percent and can last up to 50 years may get the longest lasting material used in photovoltaic cells. Because monocrystalline silicon has been around since the 1950s, its durability has been proven in both commercial and residential applications. Polycrystalline silicon vo photovoltaic cells are formed by cooling liquid silicon, which is faster and easier than growing a single crystal. However, the grain boundaries present in the crystal result in lower efficiencies than monocrystalline silicon wafers, approximately 13 to 16 percent. Gallium arsenide has also been implemented in photovoltaic cells. These cells are created by shaving thin sheets of gallium arsenide off of a larger crystal, resulting in thin wafers. While these cells can be more efficient than silicon cells with around 30% efficiency, they are currently very expensive. If the production of gallium arsenide cells could be made more cost effective, they could surpass silicon cells as the most popular photovoltaic cells in the future. Silicon has a diamond cubic structure which is a unit cell with eight atoms per cell. This makes the crystal more efficient and a better conductor of electricity. Silicon also has four valence electrons, therefore it forms four bonds with its four neighboring atoms. This yields a uniform structure of single bonds. The uniform lattice structure produces a uniform behavior when conducting electrical currents. Each crystal plane of monocrystalline silicon can produce a unique solar cell structure. 100 is the preferred direction for photovoltaic cells because it can be textured to reduce surface reflectivity. Because monocrystalline silicon is a single cell, grain boundaries are absent. Therefore, there are no interruptions during conduction of electricity. Monocrystalline silicon is created through a process known as the Czaprowski process, named after the Polish scientist who discovered it. 
Silicon with only a few parts per million impurities is melted in a quartz crucible at 1425 degrees Celsius. Once melted, the silicon goes through the doping process, in which impurities such as phosphorus and boron are purposefully added in an attempt to alter silicon's electrical properties. The doping process transforms the silicon into n type or p type. The n type has a larger electron concentration when compared to its hole concentration and has a negative charge, while the p type has a larger hole concentration and has a positive charge. A rod with a small crystal from which the larger crystal is to be formed, or seed crystal, is lowered into the molten silicon. A large single crystal is then formed by controlling the temperature gradients, the rate at which the rod is being pulled out, and how fast the rod is being rotated. There are several benefits of the use of monocrystalline silicon in photovoltaic cells. First, its identity as a single crystal means that there are no grain boundaries interrupting its crystal structure. As a result, its defect resistivity is lower than that of polycrystalline silicon. This accounts for the increased efficiency of monocrystalline silicon cells, which also makes these cells more space efficient than polycrystalline silicon, as less surface area is needed to produce the same amount of electricity. While monocrystalline silicon cells are more efficient than their polycrystalline counterparts, there are some drawbacks to using them. Photovoltaic cells made of monocrystalline silicon are more sensitive to temperature than polycrystalline silicon, which may make them less effective at certain temperatures. Monocrystalline silicon is also expensive to produce, as it must be grown using the Chokrowski process, which is also time-consuming. Monocrystalline silicon cells are also not as efficient as gallium arsenide cells. In conclusion, we have described the basics behind photovoltaic cells and how they actually transform light into energy. We have also gone over the importance of this clean alternative energy source and what materials are used to produce solar cells. Next, we introduce both the crystal structure and material properties of monocrystalline silicon. These characteristics explain why this crystal structure is ideal in producing energy. Afterwards, we went over the Chorosky process, which is the method used to create monocrystalline silicon. And finally, this video compared the benefits and drawbacks of using monocrystalline silicon as opposed to other crystal types in solar cells. Overall, the photovoltaic cell is an exciting and beneficial invention. With technological advancements, solar energy has the potential of replacing fossil fuels, leading to a cleaner tomorrow.